Hey YouTube, how's it going? Nikki Ninepins here, and today we're gonna be talking about the five things that me and every respectable Souls fan need to see return in Elden Ring. Without any more babbling, let's get right into it. Number five, Poison Swamps. As Souls fans, we're all gluttons for punishment, and what says punishing like an ankle-deep lake filled with arsenic? I've been to bodies of water like this, both in the game and in real life. I don't know which is more fun, but all I know is I turned out okay. Of course, the swamp alone is not what qualifies here. It's also the meticulously designed enemies that come along with it. Obese mosquitoes that shoot fireballs at you for some reason? Check. Angry Shrek wannabe boulder-throwing giants? Check. Horny goat demons that jump in the air and hump the life out of your face? Oh god, please, I just repressed all my memories of these things. Why'd you have to remind me? Check. You really can't go wrong here, folks. If I have any complaints about the poison swamp areas, it's that the poison effect kills you way too slowly. Dark Souls must have not gotten in the memo that it's supposed to be the hardest game ever, not the next Barney's hide and seek for the Sega Genesis. Number four. Hole in Boss Arena. If you were to ask a casual gamer what makes for an ideal boss fight, they'd probably tell you lame things like the boss having a wide variety of attacks, recognizable punish windows, and significant story impact. Well, bud, there's a reason they call you guys casuals. All these points are valid, but they are also terrible. The real questions you need to ask are, are there any obstacles in the boss arena that will kill me? Will the majority of my deaths be due to poor camera angles? Will I throw temper tantrums at the end of this fight for something that felt largely out of my control? If you've answered yes to all these questions, congrats! You've got a boss fight that'll make the likes of Nio2 fans tremble in their jean shorts. The fight with the hole I'm referring to here is, of course, none other than the fight against the old Iron King in DS2. As you can see, his attacks are very slow and require you to have the reaction time of a sloth to get hit. But that doesn't matter. None of that matters. Cause I'm just gonna get him to 2% and then fall in this big hole right here by accident. Now that's good boss design. This fight is the only boss fight in the series that features this hole mechanic, and it really seems like a missed opportunity for the developers. If they've learned anything from this, I hope it's that they'll smother the boss arenas of lands between with holes big enough to run a dragon tooth through. Number 3. Shrine of Amana. Some of you may say this is cheating because I already mentioned poison swamps earlier in this list. Two things. Shrine of Amana is an enchanted swamp, not a poison swamp. And for what Shrine of Amana lacks in poison damage, it makes up for in relentless enemy design. You can't walk two feet without one of these ankle biters running up to you and requesting a hug. But they're just a welcome committee. You also got priestesses that shoot homing darts at you from seemingly every angle, giant ticks that block your way and break all your equipment, and ogres that will send you crying back to Duloc if you so much as encroach on their swamp. Damn, two videos in and already three Shrek references? I really need to watch a new movie like Shrek 2. Enemies aside, we also see the return of holes here. You thought this game would reward you for exploring? LOL. Nope! Anytime you see a far off item in the distance or some stranded enemy that piques your curiosity, there will most likely be some random drop off in the map that will cause you to fall to your death if you pursue them. You can light up a torch to help you see and avoid the holes better, but the developers figured you would try to cheat like this, so they send the ankle biters your way, and if you roll away from them in the water, you can say goodbye to your torch. Do you see why so many people love this area? And to finish it all off, the boss is the wonderful cherry on top, a slimy frog with arms and a skull coming out of its mouth. Does he have any interesting attacks or memorable combat moments? Nope. But you don't deserve those. Your reward was playing the greatest level this series has to offer. Number 2. Foot Waifus. I always wondered which of these two happened first. Did foot fetishists join the Souls community because they saw the game had an emphasis on barefoot women? Or the amount of foot waifus in this game inspired many Souls fans to get a foot fetish? I don't know, but now it's a vicious cycle and the intersection between the souls and the foot fetish communities grows larger every day. I imagine the first character to inspire this was the Maiden in Black in Demon Souls. After that we got Priscilla, who probably spawned some dragon fetishes too, Sister Frida, and last but not least Guinevere. Wait, you can't see her feet? The developers cut them out due to time constraints? Fuck this game, I'm going back to Echo the Dolphin. Phew. 
Okay, okay. Maybe Elden Ring will bring them back. Melina, the new shrine maiden, was seen wearing boots in the latest gameplay footage. But knowing Miyazaki, I'm sure we'll get a DLC package where she takes them off. Now, before we get to the coveted number one spot, we have a couple of runners up to mention that didn't make the list. The first one is an elevator shaft that takes you from a mountaintop upwards to an underground lava fortress. This, of course, is in reference to the elevator from Earthen Peak to Iron Keep. I would really like to see the developers continue the trend of having abstract elevators whose traversal from point A to point B makes no physical sense in the real world whatsoever. The next runner up is Big Hat Logan who holds the title for most mysterious name in the Dark Souls series. We may never know why he got his name, and here's to hoping we have more NPCs with such a cryptic background in Elden Ring. Last runner up for things I hope return is the ability to dual wield shields. Cause if anything is important in the age of online dating, it's equipping two layers of protection. <laughs> and now, without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for. The number one thing we all hope to see return in Elden Ring is... EDP. You may have noticed by now that three of the items on this list have come from Dark Souls 2. Coincidence? I think not. DS2 is a masterclass in game design, and if you believe anything else at this point, you're clearly deluding yourself. ADP, aka Adaptability, is the best soul stat introduced in Souls history, maybe ever. While the virgins of the world will go for dex and the chads of the world will go for strength, the Vatimus Primes of the universe will take ADP any day of the week. Why? Leveling up ADP will increase your agility, and increased agility means increased iframes, and increased iframes means you will go from a 3 frame invincibility window when rolling to getting full invincibility and being able to clip right through the edge of the map. <laughs> I'd like to see one of those long armed dark stalkers hit me now. Haha! <laughs> High agility also means that you drink your Estus faster. And who doesn't want to chug from a flask? I know who. Losers who have never played beer pong in their lives and probably still have their mom file their taxes for them. Do you really want to be like that? No, I didn't think so. That is why you level ADP. And those are the five things we absolutely need to see return in Elden Ring. What do you guys think? Do you think I adequately covered the best parts of Souls games? Or do you think there are a couple of integral parts that need a mention? Let me know in the comments down below. But whatever you do, please don't leave any jokey responses like, Oh, what about world interconnectivity? Or, I really value a high degree of build variety. Blech. This is a serious video and it should not be tainted with juvenile game design ideas like that. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to check out my earlier video about how Dark Souls 2 got me out of a gaming rut, I'll leave a link for that down below. Again, I'm Nikki Ninepins, I love you all, and I'll see you very soon. Unless you plan on doing nothing but playing Elden Ring for the next three months, in which case I understand, because I'm going to be doing the same thing. Take care of yourselves, guys. Peace.